You're listening to the Parents of Hardworking Teens podcast, episode 40. Today, we're talking about what writing tests really want from your teen, specifically tests where they have to write in response to a prompt or an image of some sort. I know some students find that really challenging to come up with something on the spot for those. But I want everyone to know that coming up with a great idea to write about is not the most important thing in these types of tests. So if you'd like to get behind the scenes of these tests and exams and know what is the most important thing in them, then let's go. I'm Katie Jones, and with over 15 years in education as an award-winning high school teacher, international external examiner, and as a study coach, I've helped thousands of students skyrocket their results and confidence. And this podcast is where I share all my insights, tactics, and tips with you, the parent, so you can help your hardworking team get happy, smart, and successful in their study, and have you both enjoy the journey along the way. This is the Parents of Hardworking Teens podcast. Hey VIPs, how are you? I hope things are going brilliantly for you. I'm doing really well and I want to say a quick thank you for the well wishes and the comments since I mentioned that I have been basically getting out of chairs like I'm a 90 year old as I strained my back a little while ago. Now I usually record these podcasts a week or so in advance because you know me by now. I am a planner and an organizer. So I'm just getting some of your messages through right now in response to when I mentioned that. And yes, my back is definitely getting better. I'm just trying to be patient as my usual downfall when I have a bit of an injury is to go back to doing everything too soon at the first signs of recovery. But I am definitely on the mend and thank you for your messages. And I really wanted to get this podcast out there right now because I know that a lot of you in Australia have teens sitting NAPLAN tests this week coming up. And for those of you not in Australia, these are the Literacy and Numeracy National Tests. They're like the SATs tests that we used to have back in the UK. And they've been brought forward in the year this year for a reason that I actually think makes sense. It's so that schools can sooner make use of the results to inform their teaching and learning and better know their students in school. Not that these tests, of course, give a holistic view of that. I know that there are a lot of reasons out there to stop this sort of testing. I know some people don't really agree with them. I can see the pros and the cons, and I am not here to debate these tests and the usefulness of them because this is not just about NAPLAN. Examples of the types of writing tests I'm going to be talking about here also include things like the writing test in the GATT and in HSC, Module C, Creative Writing Responses. And I know that there are more and more like this in other states and other countries as well. These are exams and tests where students have a prompt to respond to. Either it might be a simple text statement or it might be an image or a photograph or both sometimes, and they have to produce an extended piece of original writing under pressure, on the spot very often without having seen it before. So this is more coming from the view that we do currently have these types of tests and I don't see them going anywhere soon. Though I did actually read an article just yesterday saying how AI, artificial intelligence, is making the NAPLAN writing test redundant. And that has inspired me to do a future podcast on the topic of AI and how it relates to our education system. So look out for that. It won't be for a while, but I'm keen to look more into that and share my thoughts with you. But on the flip side, I've also seen information about how the Australian Curriculum Authority are expanding the national tests. So when I looked recently, there are plans for schools to opt in for NAP sample assessments in science, civics and citizenship and in IT in years 6 and years 10 going forward. So although things might be changing slightly, it doesn't look like these are going away anytime soon, which is why I want to share my experiences and insider information with you. So even if your teen isn't doing that plan, I still want you to stay tuned here because having marked for the NAPLAN writing test and for year 12 writing tests as a non-English specialist. English is not one of my teaching subjects, so I'll tell you how I came to be even marking for these exams in a moment. 
What I really want to share here is what I learned about the one commonality that I have seen and how your teen can therefore view these tests and tackle them successfully, whether they are a lover of English, whether they feel like they are creative or not. Because here's the key. As an external exam marker and having covered lessons and coached students on many different types of writing assessments, it has shown me that really the task, when it comes down to the more creative tasks like a narrative, a short story, a speech, a piece of persuasive writing, a letter, the task is simply the vehicle, the conduit for the marker to judge your teen's specific writing skills, techniques, and their level of writing. It is just a way to judge things like how many literary techniques do they really know? Can they use them appropriately? Can they divide their writing into paragraphs? Can they use a range of sentence structures? How good is their spelling? Those are the things that are being judged. They could simply ask them as a series of exam questions. So they could just ask them, hey, come up with a metaphor for an old lady sitting on a bench or identify an example of literation in this text extract. But instead, they're getting them to show all of those things and make sure they can use and apply them appropriately by making them write them in a full piece of their own. So here's what that means. It means that it is not so much what the piece is about, what they're writing about, what the letter is about. It's not what their storyline is. It's not how worthwhile the topic of their persuasive speech is. It's about the skills and their application of them that are shown within those texts, within that writing. Now, that doesn't mean the topic or the storyline are completely irrelevant, but I would say, from an exam marker's perspective, the actual main relevance of those is in terms of the degree to which it provides the opportunities for your team to showcase those skills. So let me backtrack just a little bit here and break this down. I want to explain before I start getting hate mail from authors or creatives or English teachers Because, like I said, I am not an English teacher. So I am purely sharing this from the perspective of an examiner, an assessment marker, as a study coach. So I'm considering what will get marks and what won't. Where to put in effort for maximum payoff and what doesn't really matter when it comes to the result. So I'm not considering the value of creativity in itself, which of course does have value. I'm not considering the depth of understanding that your teen may get from researching a controversial issue to write about for their speech or how that influences their own personal development. And I'm not taking account of the enjoyment that they may get from using their imagination for a short story. Because these can, of course, all be valuable. So I'm not in any way trying to dismiss any of that. They're just not my areas of expertise and experience. And for those students, I might mention, who find some of that stuff more challenging, I really want them to know that that doesn't mean it has to affect their performance in these types of assessments. So how then did I come to even be marking for these types of tests and exams? Well, back in, I think it was 2014, I was given a year 11 functional English class on my timetable. Now, in Australia, things seem to be a little bit more flexible in terms of what you end up teaching compared to what you actually trained for or qualified for compared to back in the UK. So I had just moved from Sydney to Brisbane. I just started in a new teaching role. And so as the new teacher on staff and having a leftover class that needed teaching, I was given a functional English class year 11 on my timetable. And as you can imagine, as a geography specialist... 
I was not feeling especially confident in doing that. So I went and sought out opportunities to become a better English teacher for that year, for that class. And one of those was me applying to be a NAPLAN writing test marker. Because from the external exam marking experience I'd already had and taken on, I knew how valuable that was to the quality of my teaching. And basically, because I'd already had experience of external assessment and basically I showed willing, I got accepted to be a NAPLAN writing test marker and it really was super helpful both to my teaching for that class and for my experience as an examiner and not that I knew it then for my future as a study coach. So I learned about different sentence structures and how they're used in different ways plus I learned that if a student was to get a high mark they had to show a range of different sentence structures and use a variety of different sentence lengths for effect. I learned about how important it is to use a variety of punctuation and use it accurately, not just to enhance the way a piece reads, but also to achieve the highest marking criteria. I relearned all of the different literary devices for creative writing, all of the different persuasive techniques. And I say relearned because I did recall most of these from when I did all of that back in high school as a teenager, but definitely needed the recap and the reminders. And most importantly, I learned that incorporating a huge number of them in a piece of writing accurately was critical to getting a high mark. And I realized that the same marking criteria were applied whether the student was in year three, five, seven, or nine. And that makes sense because the NAPLAN tests are there to monitor progress, right? So it's understandable that there has to be the same criteria each time. It's just the standard that is going up through the years. And here's where this gets really interesting. If you've got a teen in a higher year group than year nine, stay tuned here because a few years later, I also marked the year 12 writing tests for the QCS trials. Now, they were last run in 2019. They've been replaced now with the ATAR examination system. But I can tell you, having also now used the marking criteria for those as well, they are very, very similar. They are almost exactly the same because now... Fast forward, at this point in my career, I'd also been doing external exam marking for the short response QCS paper, and I was doing work with a school to help them improve their students' QCS performance. And they contracted me to mark all of their students' year 12 trial exams, which included the year 12 writing tests. So I marked hundreds, maybe over a thousand of those papers too. So that included persuasive and creative genres, also analytical essays and feature articles. And here's the thing, the mark scheme was the same no matter which genre the student chose to write. The mark scheme was the same for that writing test. And the mark scheme was testing the same things as I had seen on the NAPLAN writing test. It was just worded in a different way and of course required the student's writing to be delivered at a higher standard being in year 12. And having spent more years since getting into all of this, I can tell you this is the same for the GATT, for MODC and the HSC, and really for all of these different types of writing tasks and assessments that I have seen nationally and internationally from the UK, to New Zealand and in between. In fact, side note, quick story. I even realized that when I had to do a writing test as part of getting my skilled migration visa to Australia, that was the same as well. (laughs) So one of the IELTS tests was to write a letter. And my prompt was that I had to write to a council to make a complaint. I can't even remember if they told me what the complaint was or if I had to come up with it. But I remember writing about a noise complaint. And here's what I was told before the test. Now, it wasn't quite in these exact words, but this is how I'm now interpreting it as I think back to that time. They said they don't care what you write about. They just want you to be able to show your vocabulary, that you can use a range of sentence structures and styles, that you can structure an argument or your points, that you have accurate spelling, punctuation and grammar. So I did exactly that. 
And this is not any kind of boast or something to be proud of because, of course, my first language, in fact, my only language, is English. I got the highest score. I got full marks. And it would obviously be more of a talking point if I hadn't got that. But this proves that point because I could have still been a fluent English speaker and writer. But if I hadn't known what they were looking for, I could have easily missed showcasing certain things in my writing. And this brings me back to that key point. These types of tasks are about your teen showcasing their skills and knowledge. They are a vehicle for them to do that. So whenever I'm giving a student feedback on a task like this, I always do it with reference to that NAPLAN writing test marking guide because it gives 10 clear criteria and it gives really clear explanations and examples of what they mean. And the best news is that this is published online for everyone to see. It is a completely open document. You can download the whole PDF. In fact, I'll include a link with the show notes of this episode so you can see it. So just go to www.rocksolidstudy.com forward slash 40. That's the numbers four zero. And I will put the direct link there for you if you're interested to go grab it. In fact, you should go grab it because... With that said, I will share with you right here those exact 10 criteria because in my experience, those are the same things that are tested even in the senior years. It's just that the quality, the level of sophistication that's expected is higher. But I really like how much more clearly the criteria are worded in the NAPLAN version of the marking guide compared to some of those senior examination marking guides. So here they are. Number one is audience. How well the language or style of writing is adapted to the intended audience. Number two is text structure. Do they have all of the structural components for their genre? For example, do they have an orientation, rising action, climax and resolution for a narrative? Do they have a hook and intro, body paragraphs and a conclusion with a call to action for a persuasive piece? Number three is ideas. Have they got three key points to back up their persuasive argument? Do they have a clear message or storyline for their piece? Note, though, this does not say complicated. It does not say totally unique for their ideas. They just need them to be clear and effective. Okay, number four is devices or techniques. So that's the use of literary techniques like similes and metaphors, emotive language, adjectives, or the use of specific and fitting persuasive techniques, persuasive devices to enhance an argument. Criterion number five is vocabulary. So how sophisticated and accurate and appropriate is their vocab? And a personal note here, Accurate and appropriate is always better than being overly wordy or trying too hard to sound ultra intelligent and sophisticated because then often it ends up not really making sense or just not being very clear. Clarity over fancy always, please. (laughs) Number six is cohesion. So how well the points and ideas flow. Number seven is paragraphing. And yes, there is a little bit of overlap here with number two, which was text structure. There are going to be some instances of some overlap between some of these, which is why it is so important to nail them if your teen is aiming for high results. Number eight is sentence structure. A range of correct sentence structures. So simple, compound, complex, etc., all used to good effect. Number nine is punctuation, and they're going to need more than just commas and full stops if they want high marks. And number 10 is spelling, which includes the spelling of simple and difficult or more challenging words. So again, there's going to be some overlap here with the vocab in number five. And notice, out of all of those, Only the third criterion out of all 10 is actually about the idea for their story or the topic for their persuasive piece. Only one out of 10, which is why when I see students agonizing over what they're going to write about, that's what just makes me want to share this information as far and wide as possible. Now, 
a little side note here, the topic or idea that they choose, as I mentioned earlier, can impact the opportunities that they are giving themselves to meet or operate at a high level in those other criteria. Now, I talked more about this in episode 18 of the podcast where I talked about choosing topics in creative and open tasks. So go check that out if you want a little bit more on that because in writing tasks, there are no marks for things like having a great title or having a totally unique storyline. Now, having a great title was something I saw students spending ages on deciding before they would even get started on their writing recently. Or something like what the characters' names are going to be. That's another thing I see students spending ages on deciding. Now, unless, of course, the name of the character has some clear meaning or link to the theme or the message, in which case that could count as a device or as an idea. But there are no marks just for having a cool name for a character. These things just simply need to be good and solid and present. They need to tick that box, but that is all. Because the writing task, whatever it is, it is the vehicle for your teen to display and showcase the skills that they have in relation to that type of writing. Can they use a variety of sentence structures and actually tailor them for effect? Can they incorporate a wide range of devices? And as a guide, I will say what I consider to be a wide range based on my years of marking of tasks for students in year nine upwards, I would say they need to have at least 15. Now, that might sound like a lot, But if they have, let's say, five paragraphs, an intro, three body paragraphs, and a conclusion, that's only three per paragraph. And often, two devices or techniques are going to be used in one sentence. So, for example, if it's a persuasive piece and they have a rhetorical question, that might also include some emotive language. So that was going to count as two. So at least 15, they don't all have to be completely different in terms of the technique or the device, but I would say they need at least seven or eight different techniques in their writing, at least. So whether or not you agree with NAPLAN tests, whether or not your teen is a lover of writing or feels creative or enjoys English or not, I hope that you can see the importance of knowing the criteria that they're being judged against in order for your teen to focus on the things that are going to get the most reward and really show their ability. And that this is the case across all year groups and all types of assessments. So like I said, I highly recommend you go download the NAPLAN test marking criteria for the narrative and the persuasive writing tests because they are exactly the same except for that third criterion, whether they are using using persuasive devices or literary techniques. Everything else is the same. But you can use that for your own insider info to help support your teen. You can just hand them over to your teen to use as a checklist for any type of writing task. So like I said, go to the show notes in your podcast app or go to www.rocksolidstudy.com forward slash 40 to grab it to refer to any time. And if your teen is sitting NAPLAN tests this week, then I hope that this is helpful. And a quick reminder that we have the Get Your Busy Teen Organized and Efficient Parent and Student webinar coming up. It's on the 30th of March and it is live. It is free and invites are going to be sent out on the Facebook page, the Rock Solid Study Facebook page and to all of you on my email list about a week before. So get that date into your diary so you don't double book over it. It is live. Get ready to save your seat. I will see you back here next week on the podcast. I hope you have a wonderful week. Bye-bye. If you're ready to have your teen achieve their best possible results with less stress, then I want to invite you to enroll them in the 10-week grade transformation program, where they're going to learn the key concepts, skills, and strategies to catapult their performance in assessments and exams. It's risk-free. They either achieve bigger and better results with a whole lot more confidence in 10 weeks, or we refund you in full. Just head over to www.rocksolidstudy.com forward slash program and I'll see you there.